I'm reacting to a kettlebell workout from Tabata Songs to give you some feedback and critique the exercise selection and to help you better move along in your kettlebell journey. We look at the exercises and the workout from the perspective of a good boy kettlebell sport style. Let's jump right into it. Grüezi Petran, Gregory von Lebestag here. Let's jump right into the workout. Before we want to get started, I want to introduce you to the idea of Tabara. Tabara comes from a Japanese scientist that discovered that high intensity training is very interesting. Just to give you some small perspective and to talk about it on the surface. And these songs are actually made that you know, okay, when do I have to work out? And when can I take a break without having to look at a timer? So the idea is great. However, I like songs that have no singing, no rapping. I love deep house music that gets the blood pumping, that gets a pumping vibe without having anything, without having some singing and rapping. Because when we coach, actually what we love to do is to give inputs and coaching cues. And if we have somebody singing or rhyming in the background or rapping or whatever, this can interfere with our coaching cues. So that's the reason why we prefer deep house music. This video, this reaction serves for educational and instructional purposes, looking at the workout from a good boy kettlebell sports style of view. This is not the bash the coach or to bash the bada songs. This is just education. And what we offer is a high level critique of exercise selection, workout protocol, and form. So the first thing that she does is American swings, where you put the kettlebell, bring the kettlebell overhead and almost top fixation. And the idea here is to work the upper body a little bit more. Now there is some feedback in the physiotherapist community that this exercise can be detrimental to your shoulders. Actually, I don't see it as much. I think when you internally rotate your arms and you bring the kettlebell up, as long as the kettlebell points down and the handle, handle points up, there is no problem with the shoulder. However, if you go all the way up, there can be a problem. You can fall with the kettlebell, there can be some torque in the wrist, you can really severely hurt yourself. This can be very tricky, especially when you use heavier weight. So we believe in the power of the hand-to-hand -hand swing to work the hamstrings and glutes as efficient as possible. So we don't choose this exercise. When we want to use an exercise where we go from a back swing into an overhead top fixation, we use the snatch. What this exercise does as well is it works a little bit more your quads, not as much as your glutes and your hamstrings. And hey, let's check out this view. Can we just take a moment and enjoy this incredible view of Dubai? Wow. You gotta get the vibes to work out or chill or whatever. This looks like good mood. Look at this, the clouds and all that stuff. Wow, this is awesome. Now going back, panning into her. Now what is happening? This is a single hand thruster. You go into a squat and then straight into a press. Now I want to jump a little bit further and show you the problems that I see with this exercise. First of all, cleaning the kettlebell like this. This is a power clean. Now what happens, the kettlebell flips, it bangs. Once the kettlebell gets a little heavier, this can be detrimental to your arms as well. Now, what you see right here, the arm is externally rotated. The kettlebell pulls her arm downwards and this can cause problems with your shoulder. You can try this, hold your arm like this and now stabilize it and, and push it. You see the external rotation, there's not a lot of radius or mobility. However, internal rotation, there's much more mobility and radius. So you're much more safe to keep the kettlebell like this and not going into an external rotation too hard. This can be very, very detrimental, especially if you use heavier weight. Now what she also does, kind of, she's not using a perfect form for a front squat because if we would do a front squat, if we get the kettlebell over here in the, in the position, the biomechanics change. It's not a back squat anymore, it's a front squat. So if you do a front squat, you wanna keep your upper body as straight as possible, get those knees out and make sure that you can really launch straight up in the air with a upper body. Now, what she does is the arm flares out a little bit to the side. This happens to me as well sometimes. What you wanna do is you wanna keep the arm straight close to your head. I've seen a coach do this. This is, this makes no sense at all to do this. You wanna keep your arm straight because you wanna stay in your center of mass. As soon as your arm flares out, you go out of your center of mass and this creates additional torque. What you can see as well is she has the kettlebell like this. The arm is straight and 
uh, palms look towards you. So that's more of a pronated uh, position. What we want is we want the kettlebell in a kind of supinated position. Why do we want this? If you got the kettlebell like this, you can see it very good in the, in the example right here. The kettlebell points towards her head. What this means is you need muscular support to keep the kettlebell in the overhead top fixation. And if you got the kettlebell like this, this uses some additional power from your biceps. This is something that we've experienced with clients. A lot of people have trouble supinating the wrist because uh, they lack a little power in the biceps. This needs some patience and some skill and some time to develop. If you got the kettlebell like this, it points down towards your elbow. And if the kettlebell points down towards your elbow, you, do, you use skeletal support. So that means you use your energy more efficiently. And that's the idea of the good boy kettlebell sports style. This is just high level critique. She's actually doing not a bad job and she keeps her upper body as straight as possible. What could be perfect is if she would push her knees out a little more and keep the arm more internally rotated, even when going down into a rack squat or in a thruster, so to speak, boom. So as you can see, the kettlebell points towards her head, so she needs muscular support from the triceps to stabilize the kettlebell. And otherwise, she would use skeletal support and use the power of her lats to stabilize the kettlebell, which is much more efficient, like we just talked about it. Boom. Maybe you could critique the, the, the exercise selection. Because she's not doing a hand-to-hand -hand swing, she's doing a American swing. This means that her anterior part works a little bit more than her posterior part. And if you look at the thruster, she's also in the anterior part, which could be, we could crit critique this on a very high level and say, hey, go into a hand-to-hand -hand swing motion where you use glutes and hamstrings, the posterior chain a little bit more because once you go into a thruster, you work the anterior chain. So this would make probably more sense when it comes to exercise selection, but still it's all good. These are only two exercises. One could critique and say, well, this is a problem because there's only two exercises for eight minutes. I'm, it's boring, blah, blah. We believe in the power of the law of exercise. There are some staple exercises, for example, swing, clean and press and snatch. And we do these all year with clients, with ourselves in our training. We do them all the time because they're the most bang for your buck, the most efficient exercises with the kettlebell. Stick to these workouts that don't have a lot of exercises in them because it will make it easier for you to get a good workout in. If you have a workout with 12 different exercises and different rep ranges, that rep ranges this can be confusing. And this also challenges the so-called law of exercise, which we believe is an awesome way to train. If you use the law of exercise, that means you do regular continuous movement, the same movement patterns, which can be stored in the cerebellum in a much more efficient way, and it gets better. This is it, thank you for watching. If this video was helpful, like the video, share it with your friends, leave a comment because this helps out the YouTube channel. And if you wanna see more of this kettlebell stuff and upgrade your kettlebell game, then subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you don't miss anything. See you in the next one, peace out. Thank you.